not divulging any client privilege or cases as well. The related harm that comes from two children by adults in their lives. How difficult is that when they're really not on the right side of it? They're doing bad things. How bad can it be? Well, our parents are supposed to nurture their kids, love their children, uh, provide a safe home, um, and protect them from the bad people. Um, but I guess to a child, that mother or that father or whoever it is that's in that household uh, that's abusing them, I guess that wouldn't be a nice thing for the kid, right? That parent probably will probably be a monster to the kid, right? Um, so. You know, I'm just thinking as, as, as you're speaking, when this very building was built, started in 1871 and completed in 1901, there really was no VHS. And a child was really left in a situation where they had no voice. DHS at least could be a voice and, 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 and an advocate for, for the, the children. That means do you always get it completely right? It's a very, very, very difficult situation. I would advise anyone in this room to read Giuliani's book on leadership. You'll learn a lot. But quite frankly, it also shows the difficult part of this. So I want to thank everyone that is here to give their testimony. I look forward to staying until the conclusion of this hearing to hear everything. And I, and I thank you all very much for your service you. and your willingness to talk. May I say a word about that case in Mr. Giuliani's book? Case? Okay. Uh, like, uh, if it's like, <laughs> well, it's up on the chair. Like, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very good. Okay. I suspect, I don't know, I haven't read the book, it was probably the case of a little girl named Elisa Iscario, died in uh, 1990, 1995. Giuliani decided the answer to that was take the child and run, take away many more children. He named someone to run the new administration for children's services who believed just that. Removal skyrocketed four times roughly, rough, very roughly, what they are now in New York City. You know what that commissioner realized? He was wrong. It wasn't working. He reversed course by the time he said, he said, I'm absolutely convinced we have too many children in Boston. I'm so happy he's there. I'm so happy he's there. Most people, most people just don't understand the difficulty it is going through. I did not expect to pick up a book on leadership and have about child abuse. So maybe they got it right in some instances and maybe they were wrong. But the fact of the matter is people's eyes have been opened. When this building was built, and that was my original point, no one really cared. hundred for a DHS accountability hearing. Um, and Mr. Lewis, you've been fighting for quite a while because your children are medically kidnapped by DHS. Um, how do you feel about today's hearing? Well, today's hearing was very, very interested. Um, this is not a home problem we're facing. This is a problem we face in the city of Philadelphia. Parents are deemed in, uh, inadequate uh, to raise their children. This is a DHS corruption and a broken system that, you know, turn off the light and leave family and individual in the dark, total darkness. We need people who shed some light on, the, on this darkness because children are getting raped, molested, abused, neglected, kidnapped, and killed in the system. And some of these family, they deem to be unfit. And this has been going on for a long time and everybody turned a blind eye. For instance, you know, how do you say that you want it better for our children when you put them in, on psychotic drugs and disturb the um, overall growth as well as being, you know, it seems like this is not gonna go away. This, this thing is bigger than we expected, okay? Because, um, for instance, they, they put my children, my son on the older one on medication and I was crushing up in his, in his, in his uh, applesauce and, and he didn't know about it until the younger one was telling him that this is what, I knew something was wrong because every time I go see him, he tired and he looked sleepy and I was like, what's wrong? And he was like, nothing. Like he just want to go sleep. And he was like, in school, his, his grade then fell and you know, everything was just going. And I knew something was wrong, but you know, apparently they're afraid of telling me because they threatened them. If they told me they wasn't coming home. 
But uh, for the HS accountability, could you tell us a little bit of why it's so important to be here and uh, why you shared your story? Well, I think it's important for me to be here because there's a stigmatize on people with mental illness and there's a breakdown with our families because of the separation. Um, it damages our communication, it damages the bonds that we have between our children, and then it causes greed among the families that take our children in. And I think it's important that this issue is brought to light. Dr. Tamira Harris. And we're here for the DHS accountability hearing. Correct. Can you tell us about your experience with DHS and what you would like to see come out of this hearing? So what I experienced with DHS is a situation where they're unlawfully removing children without any basis. They came into my home on December 22nd, 2017 and removed my child without a court order or without a warrant, without any safety issues that actually existed. They removed her because they said someone reported that there was no car seat inside the home and no baby food for this almost three year old. The issues that they came up with were all confirmed to be unfounded. They still were able to legally kidnap my daughter without any due process and I have been fighting for her and after a year of her being placed in three different foster care homes by strangers where she was abused in all of them, she's finally home with family. Now, and you're a doctor? Yes. What's your profession? So I have, a, I'm Associate Director of Clinical Research. I manage cancer research. I have managed over 200 million in cancer trials to date. Right. And they don't talk to you first. Like, exactly. I just don't understand it. So what they did was they made a decision a day earlier that they were going to remove the child without investigating the actual safety complaint. They removed the child and uh, did not give me a chance to understand why they were removing her. I did not find out why they removed her until many months later, which was in March 22nd, 2018, when I found out those were the reasons, which were not safety reasons, to remove a child three days before Christmas. I got my daughter back, but they were successful with legally kidnapping her. What that means is that uh, although the safety issues were unfounded, they did not return her back to me. Her grandmother was able to get her, and I'm still fighting to get her back and to finish up um, with them being held accountable for committing perjury in court and additional actions that they did. So I'm still working on that. Product of the system as a two-year-old to 11 years old, and um, I suffer from being in the foster care system and my children suffer from being in the foster care system and to bring awareness of what these DHS workers are doing, what the lawyers are doing, what the judges are doing, the cool workers, the third parties that they put in place, the agencies, they're not working to help us, they're working against us and I just wanted to let people know that um, it's a phenomenal thing that they're doing and that I created the PES to help alleviate that problem which stands for Permanent Empathetic Strong Support System and to put that in place to make sure that DHS enforces their regulations, their prevention goals that they have put in place that they don't do to make sure that those things happen and to make sure parents get the resources they need in the home versus outside of the home. You have to start in your backyard first. I'm disappointed in what the DHS workers were saying. Um, the social worker um, stated um, how they say DHS have these rules that they follow, these guidelines that they follow, their social workers are not able to do this, not able to do that, but you got these families saying otherwise. So tell me how this is true. Who's lying? You're outweighing it. I thank God now, you know, I got them home. They doing good in school. The whole one, he's going on an excursion. I think he's going to the Bahamas, Jamaica, and um, Puerto Rico, Mexico. So I'm glad I had them home and thank God because I'm telling you, I have them in that system. This is not a good place for no children. People talking about DHS, DHS, DHS is a recipe for disaster. I don't even call it DHS no more, I call it DHS. 
because they leave children in a mess. That's For more information, Dr. Tamir at Harris.com. Some of the issues that I found out is they use stigmatized racism, um, presenting a scenario of lack to take children. Some of those social workers are unlicensed, they have poor training, and we have a biased and unfair judicial system that needs changing. Thank you. And you know, it's like, you know, we need a system that give more brightness to family, where family had to lead more brighter future, not in the dark. These people, I don't know what to say about them, but they are unprofessional and they created a, a system within a system to make people suffer. I, I admire myself when other parents where they was going through the same, you know, the same problem I have. And I was asking them, you know, many parents always feel to, you, you know, your shoes was on the other feet and they couldn't believe their children was taken away by nature. And, and I mean, some of them went through worse, worse than what I went through. And I'm not gonna lie to you. If they don't do something about the system, they're gonna keep getting sued. They're gonna keep having problems and it's gonna get worse. So I'm just asking if, you know, to reach out to some of these state representatives, congressmen, senators, you know, city council people, ask them to, you know, ask them people, they need help, they need help. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different mentalities that it, 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 it seems hard, it seems challenging, challenging. I don't say hard, because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on, on. everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so, so I'm ready. For I'm ready challenge. for this challenge, and I was built, I was for, this. built for this. I think that I think we, that all, have we all have a purpose in life. life. And my 